I mean, generally in a game week where Nick Saban meets with the media at noon on Monday and again at around 6 o'clock on Wednesday, you get two opportunities to ask questions to Nick Saban. You get two questions a week. And that's for those of us brave enough to take those opportunities. There's some people in that room that don't don't talk. And I'll let you formulate an opinion as to why that is. There's some people that don't ask questions to show up. So an active question asker, like myself and several others on the beat, you're going to get two questions a week. So you have to plan your stories around getting two questions from Nick Saban. You're going to get two shots at an answer. And what happens if Nick Saban's in a bad mood that day? Oh, well. You, you really don't get an answer. And I'm not, I'm not blaming, don't, don't take it the wrong way. That's Nick Saban's prerogative. He doesn't owe us anything to ask, you know. I think he owes the fans some answers sometimes. And he, he generally, 90% of the time, 95% of the time even, is really good about giving those answers. Even if he gets frustrated with the way the question is asked. And I covered this before. We asked some dumb questions. And you're not going to get an argument out of me. I think the job requires dumb questions from time to time. So you get two questions a week. So even if you're planning something, stuff pops up that you have to ask about that you hadn't prepared for. Like today in Maury Smith and where along, where in our responsibilities and obligations does, does the Maurice Smith question fall today? In our, in our obligation to our readers, to our listeners, I think they want to know about quarterback. I think they want to know about Bo Scarborough. I think they want to know about how the offensive line is developing. What's the latest with Shank? How's Reuben Foster and taking the leadership of the defense? If there is a Maurice Smith football question to be asked, is who takes his place? How's Anthony Averett developing? What about Minka Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison? Has Adam Griffin shaken off that horrible spring game he had? Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Did you say Adam Griffin? Griffith. Okay, okay. I was about to say, you, you went Nick Saban on us I, for a I second. I might have. I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm so locked in right now. My point being, there are a lot of questions that you have that we are obligated to ask for you. Even sometimes when you don't want the answers. When it irritates you that we have to ask them. Part of you wants to know it. It's our duty to talk about stuff that's negative sometimes. We don't take any joy in it. But we have to ask about a Bo Davis resigning. You, that's your university. You want the answers to those questions, and if we don't ask those questions, we're failing you, even when you hate us for it. Okay? So we have a lot of questions pertinent to the 2016 Alabama football team that need to be asked today. My question is, where does that where does Maurice Smith fall in those questions? Because it needs to be asked. And I guarantee you there'll, there'll be someone out there today, if that question gets asked in, about the locker and personal belongings being thrown away, someone will say that someone, whoever asked that question is being negative. See, I see it in an entirely different way. I see it from the perspective that this is a chance that Alabama while they're not going to come out and publicly do it un, unprovoked, they might want to answer that question. you you got to give them the opportunity to. you got to get their side of the story. So it's not necessarily trying to make them look bad. It's giving them an opportunity to talk about it. Nick Saban is not going to throw Maurice Smith or his mom under the bus. I told you yesterday there would be no statement forthcoming from Alabama, and there wasn't. That's not the way Alabama does things. They are not going to get into a back and forth with Maurice Smith and his mother. You can't win that battle. And if you engage in that, you only dig the hole deeper. There's fact in life, and then there's perception. And what's the saying? Perception is reality. It is to a lot of people. It's not to you because you care about Alabama and you cared enough to get to, get to the heart of the matter. Most people only want to read the headline, and that's their, that perception, that first uh, impression that's made, that's the story. They don't care enough to follow up to figure out if it's true or not. So the damage is done. Alabama's not going to respond to it. They're not going to get into a back a day's, you know, day after day back and forth. It does them no good to do that because it extends the story and they take a further beating for it. It's it's classic PR. They don't want to engage in it. I, you know, I think it's probably the right move to make. But 
we're not doing our job unless we give them a chance to. And there's something to be said if Nick Saban says something, just releases a statement, and there's something to be said when someone asks him a question. So he's not doing it unprovoked. He was asked a question. He's going, he might answer it. No, I don't. Again, I don't suspect Nick Saban will say anything today derogatory about Maurice Smith or the Smith family. I don't even know much that he'll get into the locker at all. Even if he's pressed on it and asked about it, I don't know that he's. He, I think he'll give a very coach answer and give you an answer without actually answering the question. That's my read of the situation. I don't know if that's true or not. Jenny Ward on Twitter, on Twitter weighs in, just ask about Smith last after all the good football questions. Get coach in a good mood first. Not a, not a bad theory. Here's the thing is we don't get together and say, okay, you asked this, you asked this, you asked this. So you never know who the last question is going to be and you don't know what story they're working on them. So that theory, while it's good, hey, you get... We don't pull straws and be like, you got the last question. This is what you have to ask. We're all working on our different things. And so basically, someone's going to have to jump on that grenade to get that question answered. Not because they're scared of asking the question. I don't think anyone who asks questions in there on a regular basis is scared. Quite, quite frankly. 